For Peru, the relationship with China is everything. As Chinese President Xi Jinping arrived for the annual APEC summit, he opened a new port in the Peruvian capital, paid for by China. It's yet another example of China extending its influence in the world, while Trump focuses on America first. Canada's relationship with China is more modest, as Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie conceded after her meeting with her Chinese counterpart. The goal when it comes to a relationship to China is that, of course, we'll always defend Canada's interests, but we need to have a predictable relationship. And that's my job. The other job for Jolie and the Canadians here, answering questions from other world leaders about Trump. If there's a country in the world that understands the U.S., it's Canada. And that, Jolie says, has made Canada even more relevant at a global forum like this. I think that Canada's influence is actually increasing because of the impacts that the world is now facing with the new administration. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau spent the day meeting other APEC leaders, including Indonesia's president. Indonesia and Canada has had very good relations, I think, for many, many decades. And the relationship took a step forward with a new Canada-Indonesia trade deal. Indonesia is the fourth largest country in the world by population. It's the uh, most important economy in Southeast Asia. In a speech to a group of business leaders here, Justin Trudeau boasted that Canada was third in the world when it came to new foreign direct investment last year. Canada's been facing a massive boom of investment from around the world of companies that want to come into Canada. The message that Canada is trying to send here is that Yes, there may be some turbulence, some chaos even when Trump takes over. But so far as business and investment is concerned, Canada can be a safe haven.